Imagine your business never missing one customer message ever again. So I have built a 24 by seven receptionist and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to build that out using N8N and how to make it as powerful for your business as possible. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so before I get into the details, I'm just gonna show you a quick demo. So I've just answered a few things here. I need to book an appointment, what times do you have available, and do I have any existing bookings? Okay, cool. So it says I have one upcoming booking for Monday at 9 a.m. Maybe I wanna reschedule my booking from 9 a.m. to Tuesday, 9 a.m. So let's just do that. And of course, uh, this is quite early in the morning, 5.18. And so typically a receptionist wouldn't be online to answer these queries. So this is why it's really powerful for any business to implement something like this. Okay, great. So we got the confirmation message. We have now moved our booking that was originally on Monday to Tuesday. So I'm just gonna go into how this works. Before we get into the details on N8N, I just wanna have a quick overview. So building out a 24 by 7 receptionist has a few steps. We have a master agent, which is controlling everything. Uh, but it is broken down, if we want to put it simply into an inbound message, message batching and triage. So this is making sure that we know which messages to send to which agent. So I have broken this down into a multi-agent system. So the first agent is obviously the booking agent. Uh, then we have a general queries agent, complex queries agent, a business partner agent. So this could be something such as um, a personal employee, uh, personal assistant, or anything that is related to um, anything outside of a typical patient query. And then we also have invoicing as well. So all of these messages will then go to the outbound message. And so the idea is to communicate with people uh, using the same apps, the same platforms. So as you just saw then, it was all done via WhatsApp. And we wanna make sure that if the inbound message comes from WhatsApp, that we send it back out from WhatsApp. And we wanna have a way to ensure that it is a seamless customer experience that you don't need to have online booking forms because as you know, uh, people just don't wanna use booking forms sometimes and wanna just be able to talk to a real human. And this is a way that we can have a real human-like experience uh, 24 by seven. So inbound messages and agent handoff, this is a really important topic to talk about. We have a, you know, a little client here um, asks a question via an app. So we have uh, multiple apps that can be used. So we have message inbound platforms such as email, SMS, voice call. So these are the traditional platforms that people have been using to communicate via the internet for a long time. Then we have the meta apps such as WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. And then we also have other apps as well such as Discord, Telegram, and Slack. And so if you're getting an inbound query from a, uh, a customer or a client or a patient from one of these, um, message platforms, you want to be able to respond to them in the same way. And so uh, we need to think of ways to ensure that we have the app or the uh, chatbot agent, whatever you want to call it, uh, sending the messages back to those platforms, but still have the same logic to ensure that it has all the information from your company, such as using RAG or a vector database, um, as well as all the business logic that has been built in to ensure like a seamless customer experience for your clients. The master agent workflow has the incoming message and uh, agent handoff steps. So we have this uh, webhook, which is receiving the information from Chatwoot, which is my preferred agent handover software. Um, if you were wanting to use WhatsApp, so obviously you have the WhatsApp business cloud node here, which is really, really handy in order to get messages directly from the WhatsApp business API. However, in order to have proper agent handover, you need to be using an alternative platform such as WAPI, ManyChat, uh, and Chatwood. And for this, you need to be using a webhook. So I'm just gonna be opening up this webhook here, and it is quite simple. I'll get into the specifics of how to set this up with Chatwood in another video, but essentially, it is just a webhook. It's receiving the messages from a particular inbox, uh, and then sending it through to this chat batching workflow here. So this is a completely separate workflow. The reason why I have not put it into the master agent workflow is because it is actually quite complicated and I just wanna make sure that when I'm you know, tinkering with the master agent, I'm not having to deal with this chat batching. 
All right, so here is the chat batching and inbound messaging workflow. This is a simple one for demo purposes. I have more of an advanced one for the agent handoff, which I'll show you after this first step. So the first thing I want to talk about is chat batching. The way that many people speak, including myself on WhatsApp, is using this burst messaging technique, such as, hey there, do I have an appointment? Thanks. And instead of it firing off three different messages, uh, three different responses for three different messages, it will get each line and then aggregate it into one and then send back one message response. So I'll show you that in just a moment when this message comes through. Cool, so we got the response back saying, yep, we have an appointment at Tuesday 9 a.m., which we just booked earlier. And so, yeah, if you need to make any changes or have any further questions, feel free to ask. Fantastic, very, very great response. So let's see how this worked in the actual workflow. Okay, so let's go into each node. Our first node is the message has come through from the previous workflow. The message information that has come in here is the actual uh, message, which is, hey there. Then what it is doing is going and checking which inbox it came from. Depending on your chat word interface, you might have a message coming from WhatsApp or Instagram. And so we just wanna make sure the message is coming from the same place. Then the next step here is ensuring that we understand whether it is coming from a patient or whether it is coming from an agent. We just want to make sure that the messages that are coming from patients are accepted and the messages that are coming from the agents are ignored because we don't want it to just go on a recursive loop where it's just talking to itself. Once we, have, once we know that it is coming from uh, the Rutique demo WhatsApp and then we have the patient, it's coming from a patient, let's add that message to a queue. So for the anti-queued messages, I've got a Superbase node here. I'll do a deep dive into Superbase in another video. However, Superbase is a fantastic way to deal with any of your relational database and vector database requirements. And yep, so we have a relational database which just has three simple fields, which is user ID, message, and message ID. So I'll just show you the relational database here. So this is the Rutique AI demo for the 24 by seven receptionist. We got a message queue. So we got three columns here. We got message ID, user ID, and then the actual message. Then what has happened here is we have the user ID, which is my phone number, and then the message, and then the particular message ID. This then comes through. Uh, we wait 15 seconds to make sure that all the messages actually come in, and then we get queued messages. Here we go, we have the queued messages, which is, hey there, um, I'm not sure why we've got an, addi an additional one down here. I think it was just from some additional testing that I did earlier. But we essentially had, yeah, my number, hey there, you got the message uh, ID, and then we've got, do I have an appointment? Thanks, uh, and then additional thanks for some reason, but that must have been from previous uh, testing, but that's all good. We then use a sort by message ID. So the message ID is a way to do a timestamp. So let's sort the message ID. Um, and then you check the most recent message, which is thanks. And so then from there, you can then delete the message queue, which is what I've done here. We've just deleted all the messages within the queue to ensure that it frees itself up for the next batch of messages. And then you aggregate that into one response. So you got, hey there, do I have an appointment? Thanks, thanks. As you can see, when I go into the actual workflow, so I'm just gonna go and step back out into the master workflow and see how it interacted with the master agent to get us the response that we got, which was, you know, a fantastic little update on what our booking is. So let's go to the executions. As you can see here, we've got the two errors which shows the errors of not all messages going through. So we have, we sent three messages. So this is a success, the succeeding one and then the two failed ones to make sure that we didn't send a response. We have this chat batching workflow being um, outputted here. Hey there, do I have an appointment? Thanks, thanks. And so then it gets sent into the LLM chain to do the triage. Here we've got the triage booking request. So this is a category of a booking request and 
We have the message, hey there, do I have an appointment? Thanks, thanks. Then that goes through the switch to tell me which agent it needs to go to. And then it goes to the master agent, which then goes to the booking agent. Uh, the booking agent comes back with, yes, you have an upcoming appointment scheduled for Tuesday. Um, and then we send that message off to the client via chat word. So this is another HTTP uh, node here uh, because we are using chat word. If you're just directly using the WhatsApp API or the Facebook Meta Graph API, you could use that as the outbound. But since we're using Chatwoot to ensure that we have proper agent handover, I'm using an HTTP um, node and then going via Chatwoot. There we go. That is one way to deal with the actual chat burst messaging, which is amazing. I touched on the, let's go back into the workflow. I touched on how to deal with making sure that we have proper steps to not have the recursive loop for the agents. And so this is, yeah, checking the inbox. You can have multiple inboxes, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want. And then you can have also, you need to make sure you have a step to make sure that we have it understanding whether it's coming from a patient or from an actual agent. If you don't have this step, it's just gonna do a recursive loop over and over and over. So yeah, make sure that you have these steps in place to ensure proper messaging, which is more of a human-like experience. For this particular template, I'm gonna leave in the description below, and then I'm gonna show you in a second video how to do more of an agent handover system, which is a little bit more advanced, and I'll just take a little bit more time to go into the nuances of how to do that. So be watching out for that video, and we'll get into more on how to build the 24 by seven receptionist step-by-step -step for you guys to ensure that you never miss a booking ever again, which is just gonna increase revenue for many of your clients, as well as save so many hours of admin typically spent on checking emails and messages. So, yeah. And there you have it guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna be showing you more videos on breaking down the 24 by seven receptionist, which is saving my clients thousands and thousands of dollars, as well as so much time, free time for them to actually enjoy their practice and not dealing with a lot of the admin stuff, which really bogs them down. And so if you're wanting to get some more insights to a specific problem that I just showed you today, please leave a message in the comments below. Please like and subscribe as this is a new channel and I'm trying to get the word out there on how to build out AI solutions using N8N for small businesses. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.